Today I'm going to be showing you how to make an isometric level using Unity's tile map and the end result will be something like this. Of course you can design it however you like. Um, you probably have better designing skills than me. But and then in the next video we're going to be actually moving the player by clicking on a tile or clicking in somewhere around the tile map and then the character will be moving to that position. And so now we have our 2D game and then we can go to the asset store and actually get some isometric tiles to use in our game. So then let's search for isometric tiles and then I will be using a free version of an asset called isometric blocks. It's a very cool asset and it's for free. So I'll just click import to import all of these assets. If you have your own isometric tiles you can use those too. And then once this pops up, we click import to import the whole package. And once it's finally done downloading, um, let's go back to our scene. And we have our assets down here in our Assets Devils Workshop, strange name. And then we go to our low poly pixel folder and then textures. And then we have a bunch of different kind of tile sets. So if we click the first folder, we have the normal isometric tiles. And if you click the other folder, you have different kind of tiles and you can just kind of see which ones fit your game best. But for now, I'm just going to use the ones in the first folder. And so I'm going to be making a tile palette. So if we go to window, 2D and tile palette, this will allow us to draw the tiles to our scene or game. And so we actually have to create a new palette. So let's create a new palette and let's call it isometric for now. And then we have our grid. We don't want it rectangle since that's just a normal 2D game without an isometric view. We want it to be isometric or isometric X as Y. And so I'm going to be using the isometric X as Y. And that basically means that if we change the Z position as our tile, it looks as if it's go moving up or down. So we can make it look like we have elevated surfaces just by moving our Z position of each tile. So let's select that and then let's just select automatic so it will be an automatic cell size. If you want to do it manually, you can put in the X and Y values for your tiles, but I'm just going to be putting it automatic for this tutorial. And then we just click create. And I'm going to go to back to my assets folder and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call it palettes. So we can just save all of our palettes in that folder. Now we actually have to put tiles in the palette. So you can select any tiles you want. I'm just going to select this one and I'm going to select a crate with control and clicking so I can select multiple tiles at a time. And then I will select this tile over here as well. And so we want to change a couple of settings on the texture import settings on the right. First, we have to make sure it's in sprite mode and then we have a single sprite. So one sprite and then the pixels per unit is very important. So this is how many pixels per unit or pixels per meter there is. And usually for isometric tiles, you want to set to this to the width of your tile. So in the case of these tiles, our width is 1024. So we put 1024 here. For these tiles specifically, I'm going to be putting a max size to 64. And this basically compresses the tiles so it's lower quality and I'm doing that because if you don't do that, these tiles specifically look very jarring when they're not compressed. They're, they look too good that it kind of hurts your eyes. So I compressed it to 64 and then I just clicked apply. And then once we have all those tiles, we can select them. They're already selected and we can drag them and drop them into the tile palette. And then in this folder, we want to right click create new folder and let's call it bitmap. And so Unity will convert these tiles into a bitmap format and that's um, what it uses for the tiles. And so see the res, it looks a little blurry, but I'm just going to increase the size so you can see if I put the size at 2048 and I click apply, it looks really nice, but it looks too nice when you put them together. It's just a personal preference. You can change around the values. I'm just going to be putting it to 64. I kind of like that, like that blurry look. And we actually have to have a grid to draw on. So on our hierarchy on the left, we can right click, create 2D object, and we can create a tile map. And let's actually choose down here the isometric X as Y tile map. And so it makes that tile map for us. Let's actually put the game scene. Let's drag it to the side so we can see how it looks in the game. 
And I'm going to change the free aspect to 16 by 9, which is what most games run on. And so now we're in our grid and we have a tile map. You can add multiple tile maps to a grid. So now we can just select any tile we want. I'm going to select this one. We can select the paintbrush. You can also press B. And now you can paint on your tile wherever you want. So there's a couple issues that I'm seeing right off the bat. The first one is that the tiles are looking separated and you can actually change that in the grid itself. So if you click on the grid object, there's a cell gap. So you can actually change the, the distance between the cells and we can actually close the X distance by putting it to 0.1, negative 0.1. And now it looks much tighter together. And once again, this may vary for per your tile, so you have to kind of figure out what works best for you. And then another thing is that the tiles are not in the center of the square, they're kind of at the top, and so we can change that in the actual tile map game object. So if you click on the tile map game object, there's a tile anchor, and it's saying it's at 0.5 and 0.5 of X and Y. So if we change the X to zero, and we change the Y to zero, it'll orient those tiles right where they're supposed to go in the middle. So I'm going to select this paint bucket tool and select a big area that I want to draw. And now I want to create some sort of border around this. I'm going to be choosing this uh, cobblestone tile. I'm not sure what it is exactly. But for this, we want it to be elevated on top of this one. So we're gonna make a new tile map just for the different elevation. So we can click on the grid, we can right click 2D object tile map, and we can actually rename this tile map elevation. So if you have multiple levels of elevation, you're gonna wanna make a tile map for each level. So then you can actually change the properties of this tile map without affecting your ground or the other elevation. So this is the second floor, if you'd call it that. We can select our cobblestone and start drawing on, on the map. So we can just put it at the border. And right now it looks really funky. So one thing is that the sprite, so this is how it's supposed to look like. But if you take that away, it's being cut off by the one next to it. And that's because it's not accurately determining which order to render them in. And that's because we actually have to set that in our settings. So we go to Edit, Project Settings. Then we go to Graphics. There's a Transparency Sort Axis. So this is the axis that it will be sorted on. So right now we're not even using the Z axis. Since this is a 2D game, we're using the X and Y. So this is not, we're not using the Z axis at all. We're just using the X and Y. And so we wanna sort it based on the Y axis. So the closer it is to the bottom, it will appear more in front of the other tiles that are to the back of it. So we wanna sort by the Y axis. So we just select the Y axis down here and we enter in a one. And then another thing that we want to do is check the transparency sort mode. We want to put that to custom access. And then we can close that setting, but you see we, we still have that problem. And it's because in, currently in the tile map render, we have it, the mode set to chunk. And so Unity uses chunk to basically reduce the performance cost of a tile map. And so it basically takes all the tiles and renders them in one go. It batches them up as one large block. However, that means that it does not sort the tiles correctly sometimes, but there's actually a pretty easy fix for that. So one way to do it is that in our elevation, in our mode, we just check the individual. And so now you see that once we changed the mode to individual, it does not cut off the other blocks but then this is not very good performance wise. But Unity recommends we put individual mode while we're editing the tiles and the game. But when we're actually going to build the game, they recommend switching it back to a chunk and then putting the, the tiles in a sprite atlas, which basically unifies several textures into one combined texture. And so Unity calls this single texture and only does one draw call instead of having to check each texture and doing multiple draw calls but I'm just gonna be using individual for now. And so you can see that we're, gonna, we're having this problem again where it's not central in the, in the box itself. So we can just go to the tile anchor for the elevation and put it to zero, zero. 
and now it aligns perfectly with the box. And then you see we're still having a, a, a weird issue here. This one just suddenly cuts off out of nowhere, and that's because Unity is having difficulty determining which one to render. Since they're in the same place, it doesn't know which one to render first. So we can actually change the Z axis for our tile map. So if we actually move our Z upwards, it will appear elevated, which is really cool. That's the isometric X as Y that we chose. And now it looks like it is a wall. Another thing that we can do is that if we control Z, we can actually change the sorting layer. So we can change it to another layer that we want that's higher on the list. So on a sorting layer, you would add in a new layer called maybe test. And that since test is above the default layer, which is what the other tile map uses, then we can just use test and it will render above the other layer. We can also just use the default layer and choose a higher order. So maybe we can choose one. And since it's higher on the list, it will be rendered first. So now we have kind of a wall. And so this is cool and all, but what if we want to add in colliders? So it's actually really simple. Unity has um, a tile map collider that they provide. So we want to add in colliders to both the ground and the walls. So on the ground, on the tile map, we can go to add component and then tile map collider 2D. And you can see we have a bunch of colliders now in place for our ground, but this doesn't look very efficient. So Unity also has a composite collider 2D and it takes all those colliders and puts them into one. And to do that, we have to go to our tile map collider 2D and we just press used by composite. And so now it'll put all those colliders into one so we can save performance. And now we want to do the same thing for the walls. So for the elevation, I'm going to add in a composite collider 2D and also a tile map collider 2D. And then for the tile map collider, just press used by composite and it'll put them all together. And so now let's say we want to add in some non-walkable area like water. So I actually have to find a water tile here. So right here we have a water tile, it's the 0064.png and we can change the pixels per unit to 1024 and then I'm going to change the max size to 64 and then apply. And then we can open up back our tile palette, so window, 2D, tile palette, and then let's just drag and drop that water into there. And then it's going to ask you where to save it, so you just click the bitmap folder we made and click save and then we have our water. We want it to be on the same elevation as the ground, so we can just click the ground. So then we can just start to draw wherever we want our lake to be. So I'm just going to make this weird kind of lake. And then it's kind of, it looks like it's on top of the grass, which is weird. And that's because we have the tile map, um, the mode set to chunk. So let's just set that to individual and then it will appear normal again. All right, so now that we have that, um, we can still walk on the water, which is something we don't want. So let's add in a collider tile map. So let's right click on our grid and let's do 2D object and isometric X as Y tile map. And we are going to call this our collision tile map. And you can have a tile map just for collision. So you can limit off where you don't want your player to be going. So for our collision, we can just select a random tile that we want and we can use that to define our collider. So let's say we don't want our player walking over here. So we put the collider here. And right now I'm just gonna set the chunk mode to individual so I can kind of see where it is. And I'm gonna set the tile anchor to zero, zero like we did before. And uh, this is not what we want, right? We don't want crates on a lake, but what we can do is we can add in the tile map collider as well as the composite collider. Then we press used by composite in the tile map collider. And then we can actually change the offset of the tile map collider 2D. So we can change the offset on the Y axis to 0.5 and we can actually go to a wireframe mode. So now you can see we have our collision detection there working. So now we can go back to shaded and we don't want the crates to appear, obviously. Um, so it's very simple. Everything's in an order, right? Everything's rendered in an order. The grass is 
rendered last, the, the elevations rendered first, and so we can actually make the crates be rendered as one of the first ones, so then it can get overridden by the water. So we can do that by setting the order in the layer to a lower one, so we can set it to negative one, or any number lower than that, and it'll actually not render it since our grass is in a higher rendering order. And so that's the gist of it. You can then go into your elevation, you can add some crates in, and those will also have colliders already attached to them since we have a tile map collider object attached to our tile map. And so you can just play around however you like. So that's the end of this video. In the next video, I'll be going over a clicking movement. So you click on the map and then your character will move to the position where you clicked. And this will be using the new input system. I also have some announcements before I go. I recently opened up a Patreon where I'll be offering services such as source code and early access to videos. There's other benefits as well listed on there. And I really appreciate the support. It not only helps me make more videos, it also helps me get more hardware and software that I may need. And I'd really like to thank my two new patrons on the highest tier. I'd like to thank Michael Taylor, and I'd also like to thank Robert Carlson for the support. I really appreciate it. And all of the feedback I've been getting has been really positive, and I'm excited to continue making more videos into the future. I also have a Discord channel that I'll put a link to in the description. If you have any questions, you can ask them there as well. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and see you next video.